Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Eindir Van Vogel, principal of Bridgestone High. Um, and I'm Pearl Null. I am the FNB events manager in the Western Cape. A little bit of background of our school. Uh, the school is in existence for now 54 years, starting in 1964. It's in the Athlon area. And also, uh, the school is currently, we, we do have currently 30 educators. Uh, for the last uh, 10 years, I'm the school principal at the school. Uh, also, when I took over the school, the school was declared by the Western Cape Education Department as a dysfunctional school. There were 48 grade 12 learners, and the pass percentage overall from grade 8 to grade 12 was about uh, 40%. Now, you walk into such environment and you say to yourself, must I, what must I do here? Uh, but it was a challenge for me. Then, in 2012, 2013, 2011, 2011, 2011 and 2013, I was also part of PFP uh, in a previous partnership. And last year, I was approached again to be part of uh, a next partnership. And my partner here uh, with me today, Paul Nell. Uh, first of all, I want to say also, thank you to Pearl, who's been a partner of Bridgestone High. And also, thank you to PFP for giving me a second opportunity to be on this program. Okay. Presenter. Oh. There we go. Okay, so those were a couple of the accolades that, that Andrew just mentioned. And one of these that I thought was quite important as well was that the 2014 to 2018 they were selected for Band Slam, Band Slam, which is bands performing music, and they also had one of their learners, Yolakazi Jazili, who was in the school's drama department, and she wrote a, a short play, and that play was produced on SABC3. So they are wonderful yeah. things happening. <laughs> Center. Okay, so since our partnership with uh, Bridgetown High School, these are a couple of the things that we have done, which is a life skills and mentorship program for grade 10s, which we mentored for a year, taught them life skills, entrepreneurial skills, over a nine-month period, every Saturday morning they would meet at a facility from nine to one where we fed them and they were taught these, these skills. We also have a career guidance workshop, which was um, facilitated by Brainwaves. That took place last year, and those are a couple of pictures from that workshop. Okay, this was also very interesting. You, you'll be fascinated how many of the learners do not know how to operate an ATM or how to do the cardless withdrawal, so we also took them through that experience. And then something that we thought was missing in schools, there's an organization called Ubuntu Touch, and they empower uh, ladies in the Strand area to do corporate massaging. And when we took this out to Bridgetown High, many of them were not very comfortable with us coming to do massages <coughs> for the educators. And we said, these are massages with your clothes on. <laughs> <laughs> So it's 15-minute massages, there you can see them in the chairs, and, and it's also empowering these, these young people to, who are then given employment or opportunities in health spas, big health spas as well. Okay. Um, we've created lots of contract work for, for the learners at, um, at Bridgetown and into FNB. And um, I've also had some opportunities to address the staff and the educators, and last year, that's Yolakazi, the girl who won the award for the SABC production, and the school has a band as well. Jazz band. Jazz band. Um, yeah. yeah. So, 
This was also very interesting in that the quad that you see in that picture there, that's where they have their assemblies. They sit in the open air. And um, valedictory has to be held at external venues and they have to pay to have valedictories there. Which is very sad and um, I'm hoping that in this forum <coughs> today there is someone that can tell us how do we go about getting a hall for one of the oldest schools in Athlone, a high school where learners still have to sit in the quad <coughs> for assemblies. On rainy days they can't have assembly. The fact that also um, when they have matric exams they have to open up two classrooms to do matric exams. If they had a school hall, that would be possible. Okay, these are just all the things that FNB doing with the school with FN, as part of FNB financial literacy, conversations with the grade 11 and 12 learners, staff room upgrade. Um, and this is the very exciting one that we've just embarked on in July this year. There's a, a mentorship program with Kalisa Social Solutions where we are mentoring learners from, for three years. So it's grades 10, 11, and 12. It's a three-year partnership because we have found that if you are mentoring a learner from grade 12 only, some of them don't know at that stage what their life journey is, what career path they want to follow. So Kalisa Social Solutions have used FNB as the pilot at Bridgestone High to run this three-year program. <coughs> Why did I get involved? So when I share this with people, they find it, they, they, they don't believe it, in that I was a former pupil of Bridgestone High from 1976 to 80. <laughs> and many people, when they see a pale face, they assume that you are white and that you come from a privileged background and there are some people who are pale who use that to their advantage to be considered as that white person. So often um, in conversation people will listen to me and they'll say where are you from exactly? And my, my immediate answer is I'm proudly colored. I'm born and raised District 6 Cape Flat schooled and I really am so proud to share that with anyone at any time. Oh, yeah. so, so the picture, this picture that you see there, the, the third, the, the palest person, <laughs> <laughs> that's me in my matric year in 1980 and the lady on the end, she was Cheryl Stevens and um, she's now Cheryl Balters and she is the Deputy, Deputy principal, principal of the school, so also someone who is still giving back. Yeah. So, for those who were around in the 76 to 80 period, could I have a show of hands? <laughs> okay. But for those that were at school in that period, <laughs> yeah, we in that time we were the ones jumping the trains from Athlone, collecting the schools along the way, Athlone High, Sinton High, and the crowd grew and grew, got onto that train in Athlone, then we were warned to say, they are waiting for you in town, 76 to 80 was the year of, the, of riots, so they said they're waiting for you, we'd get off that train in Woodstock, march through to Cape Town, and when we got into Strand Street, there they were. Um, those cannons with the purple dye at that stage so that they could identify which of the learners were involved in the match in the marches and um, yeah, back in the day was also one of those photo loopers as they say <laughs> in that. In that. Um, the other picture that you see there is a, um, is a, yeah, it's a reunion mm. of our class in 1980. Andrew, if you want to... Last one. Okay. So, one of the, the, the objectives are really, really, and very seriously in this room today, if there's any guidance as to how we can get this hall started, the school has massive facilities, so, the, so they have the, the, the premises, but how does a school that has been in existence since the 60s 
still not have a hall. So, uh, yeah, I'm reaching out to you guys today for that. And I'd like to commend Andrew for his tenacity, for the passion that he has at Bridgetown High. They have huge challenges with drugs, with actually with, with teachers as well who can't handle the millennials and they actually can't wait to retire. And that is, that is a fact out there. So um, one of the, my favorite quotes is, be the change you wish to see in the world. We can't wait for others to solve our problems. And it is for us to step up, to step up to the plate and be those active citizen citizens and do something. Thanks. Andrew? Yes. I just want to add to the following also, is that since I took over, uh, there's major changes in the school. We have changed completely from 400 learners to almost 1,000 learners, from two, uh, starting with 200 grade eights, finishing with 172. Tonight we have our valedictory, so I'm going to, after the session, I'm going to my, back to my school to say to the learners, Mm. There's, a, there's a bright future outside. You need to take it up. To say to them, follow the right way. Also, I just want to say something also. Last year, a learner left school in grade 11. Go. She was at one of the top schools. Her father was unemployed because he was sick. He was in hospital, he couldn't work anymore. A mother was the sole financial breadwinner in the house. She couldn't pay the school fees. The child decided, the grade 11 girl decided, but in order for us to survive, I need to step out of school. So that the younger brother who is in grade, who is currently now this year in grade 8, can go to high school, and the younger one also in primary school, can also attend school. And then they applied this year at our school. For uh, a mother applied for grade 11. And then midway in the first term of this year. Now as a principal, as a person working very closely in your community and do understand the social circumstances of our kids and of our parents. It was something which was not okay with me. This family is struggling to get from day one to the end of the month. And here the parent want to enroll that child in grade 11 again. And then I took it upon myself to ask for a great change. But I never told the parents anything about it. And then I asked for a report card of grade 10. And I do have the report card of grade 11. That child was average code 7, but it's due to the circumstances sure. that she couldn't attend uh, the September last year exam in the end of the year. And with the assistance of the district office and head office, we changed, but now she had to change subjects also. Long story short, everything was granted, she had changed completely. She is now fourth position this year. She has been accepted at the University of Stellenbosch to study LLB, uh, to study law, at UWC to study LLB, at UCT also to study law. Now, if you don't step in, then such learners don't reach their potential. So it is as one of our speakers was saying earlier that there's a lot of potential out there, but you as an educator, you is in the best position to see what you can do for somebody else. And she's, here, she's going to receive tonight the principal's award for her commitment. And I can tell you tonight, she's going to end with a past percentage of over 80% average, that low. Yes. Thank you. In closing, I want to say from my side also, thank you for the opportunity. 
PFPF given me for the second time, as I said before. It was a very good journey, very good conversation, being part of this, and our learners, our teachers, they are gaining out of our partnerships. And I want to say also to members sitting here, spreading the word of development, spreading the word of education, that we all do have a huge responsibility out there. And it's us who will change the future of our youngsters. Thank you. I'm going to have the very last word. So he has his valedictory tonight, but that's commitment where he's here to share the partnership and also the fact that Bridgetown High, it wasn't by fluke that Bridgetown High was given to me. PFP had a huge problem with me. FNB sponsored me to be part of this program, but I said I would if I get breached on high. And they said, no, it doesn't work like that. I said, well, that's it for me. I will wait until breached on high is ready. So it was meant to be. Um, also the fact that we were in circle 27, and on the 27th of April is when we celebrated our graduation, and we were told that we had 10,000 rands for the graduation. And I, I attended one. It was on the fancy wine estate and all of that. And I said, why do we have to do that? Can we do our own thing? And we did. So our principals could each invite 10 to 15 learners to our graduation. The principal was then the, the butler to his table of learners. We fed them. We had music. Bridgetown High was the entertainment. The jazz band was the entertainment on that day. And so I am also putting it out to all of you guys. Was that, in fact, we only used 6,000 rands. We gave 4,000 back. <laughs> so, so please, don't go onto those fancy wine estates and that. Do something in the community and get the kids involved. Thank you. <laughs>